Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Drury, and this is my colleague, Julia Kell, and we are from Uni Radford University, and today we will be discussing the town of Daint, Virginia. From the lines of the coal cars on the tracks in the train yard, to the tiny coal camp houses hidden within the mountains, to the mural at the entrance stating coal, our history, our heritage, it is obvious that mining is at the heart of the community of Daint. This is no wonder, for the headquarters of the Clinchfield Coal Company was established in Daint in the early 20th century. However, the town has been sold to various coal companies since. What does not quite meet the eye so soon is the intriguing history of this town that we have gotten to know this past fall semester as a continuation to the project created last year and our community partnership with the Clinch River Valley Initiative, Kirby. Not only have we learned about oral history and different methodologies associated with it, we have put this knowledge into action by interviewing the elderly members of Daint, as opposed to members from St. Paul, which is who was interviewed last year. Curvy will be able to implement excerpts of the interviews into a book in the making about interviewee stories growing up on or near the Clinch River. Also being put together is a website highlighting the process of interviewing Clinch River Valley community members and will include pictures, audio, transcriptions, and a video. It is also possible that parts of the audio recordings of the interviews will be accessible through QR codes on the kiosks lined up at access points along the clinch in the hopes of promoting tourist attractions in the area. With the founding of Daint came a boom in economy from, a coal, and, from coal and a tight-knit community. Years passed and the effects of land still being owned by the coal company despite a dramatic decline in industry is negatively impacting not only business opportunity and the environment, but also hindering young individuals' interest to move to the area and become involved in fighting for allowing Daint to have its own land to prosper off of. Driving through Daint, you wouldn't know that it used to be the biggest town in Russell County, home to 4,000 people at its peak. Now the town has around 600. Divided up into steep hollows, the houses are small and close to one another. Some are dilapidated and abandoned. However, the town is far from lifeless. There are five churches and a community center, which is a popular gathering spot for activities. The community center stands a little down the road from the Coal and Railroad Museum, a historical treasure trove which the people of Daint take much pride in. Today, I would like to share what I learned about the economy of the town. I will talk about Daint's past as a coal town, what changed leading up to the present, and future options for tourism and revitalization. When Daint was a booming coal town from the early to mid-1900s, it had everything you would expect in a prosperous area. A hotel, theater, beauty shop, multiple schools, a hospital, and a company store. The town was a popular spot for visitors. People from New York, as well as coal company executives, would visit Daint in order to do business with the coal companies, and they would spend the night in the hotel. As Bobby Gullett, a retired receptionist who volunteers at the Coal and Railroad Museum explained, we did not have to go out of this town for nothing, nothing. And back then, everybody took pride in what they had. Though Clinchfield Coal Company owned Daint, for the most part, our interviewees didn't seem to mind that the company controlled the town and that they had to use script to pay for goods. Loretta Sawyers, who worked in a sewing factory as well as an assembly line for Ford Motor Company in Lebanon, says, I guess a lot of people would have starved if it hadn't been for the coal company, and in that way, it was good. It was true, the company provided everything the people needed. In terms of supplies and groceries, the company store had food, clothes, furniture, and appliances. And not only did the company offer mining jobs, but it also owned the stores, factories, and even the logging industry. Individuals usually began work at young ages to provide for themselves and their often large families. Arthur Phillips, a retired coal miner, had seven siblings, and some families had even more children than his. Before he worked in the mines, and also before he was in the army at 19, Arthur went to St. Paul to help a milkman for $2 a day, and also picked pears for a man in Cincinnati for 75 cents a day. Bobby said, we have never been poor, we have never had a lot, but we had enough. Some would view those times in Daint as poverty-stricken. 
However, people like Bobby and many others appreciated all they had. Though perhaps materially poor, the people were spiritually rich and saw the positives in their lives. For, exa for example, Bobby told me a story of when she and her family had to leave their house because of a slate dump giving way and sliding toward it. Before they ran, she and her cousin grabbed the necessities, a loaf of bread, a gallon of water, and a jar of peanut butter, but they didn't take anything to spread their peanut butter with. Bobby said she'd been teased about that all her life, going off with a jar of peanut butter but no knife. Their house was not damaged by the disaster, but she and her family still had to leave temporarily. However, she laughed at the memory of her and her family, and I could see that even though this was a startling event, she still looked back on it as a time when she and her family were close. When the coal reserves were exhausted in the 1960s, many of the miners were transferred to another mine called Duty. After the coal left, much of the town of Daint soon began to disappear. An interviewee says people started moving out, hunting up different jobs, and moving to different parts and different places. Next thing you know, there's not enough kids to go to school, and the school's gone, and then everything's gone. The people I interviewed all miss the way Daint used to be and hope that it can be revitalized. They have fond memories of growing up in the area, and though many members of their family have moved away, my interviewees have stayed in Daint most of their life or keep coming back to it. Gay Francis, a S Sunday school teacher as well as a factory worker, says, I always loved this place when it was booming. I hope that we can get it back booming again. I miss what it was. However, Daint has struggled with getting funding while other towns in Russell County receive more help. For example, there is a dangerous drop-off into a creek that needs a guardrail, but the county has not done anything about it. Arthur, who is a member of the community center board, says, the museum got some money one time, but I've asked politicians, I've called them, wanted a guardrail put up down through there. Still, nothing has been done, and he says, I don't think they hardly know we live over here. According to one interviewee, the president of People Incorporated filed for grants to build a store in Daint. However, the grants did not go through because virtually all land in Daint is still owned by the mining company. There is no way for the county to invest in new in infrastructure and economic growth. Due to this issue, Daint has been permanently placed on the back burner. Fortunately, there are many opportunities for revitalization in Daint, particularly in regards to tourism. Already, the Santa train is a popular attraction. The train started 75 years ago as a way to provide candy to children who otherwise wouldn't have it on Christmas, and now it draws people from all over the country. The Cohen Railroad Museum has also attracted people and helps preserve Dane's history. In 2016, the museum had around 1,800 people from 28 states sign the register. In the past, Dane also had a passenger train which people often use to travel to larger towns and visit family. One idea is reactivating this in order to attract more tourism. There is a lot of rich history in Daint that could definitely be used to draw tourists in, such as the railroad tunnel, as well as the African American school and church. Also, Daint is in a beautiful area, drawing people to Lick Creek and the Clinch River by offering ATV trails Tours and whitewater rafting could be a start in encouraging people to visit. There is also a plan to allow for people to spend the night in Dane and what will be renovated coal camp housing. Many of the people living in Dane have generations of family members who have worked in the mines. Ex-coal miner Bill Carter said, back then, if you lived here, you worked in the mines, and if you didn't work in the mines, you didn't live in a company house. Mining has been a way of life in the community for decades and has been part of the daily lives of everyone who lives there. Also impacting them on a day-to-day -day basis has been the effects of pollution, reclamation work, and a poor sewage system. Since the early years of Daint to the present, slate piles have been prevalent in the area. Referred to as gob piles, these masses of old slate coal have a unique history. They would sometimes catch on fire and create a lot of smoke, and water only fuels the flames due to slate's chemical composition. 
Community members remember that wearing white was often pointless due to the soot that would cover their clothes immediately once they stepped outside. There's a famous story in Dane of how Earl Jenkins, community center leader, met his wife. Someone was on top of a hill and pushed the gob pile, overturning a house. While searching through the pile, they thought they found a doll, but it ended up being a young girl who eventually became his wife. Many gob piles can still be found in Daint. Earl said that in this past year, he has found many along Lick Creek, which is a major contri contributor to the Clinch River. When a hard rain comes, it washes into the creek and causes pollution. This is one of the reasons gob piles are being cleaned up, due, cleaned up with reclamation work. Reclamation work is helping to restore the land after mining has taken place. Also polluting Lick Creek and therefore the Clinch River is garbage. Daint has no trash collection services, so it is easier for people to discard their trash and leave it all over the ground and in the creek. The first thing you see when you drive to Daint is hundreds of abandoned washers and refrigerators where an old appliance store once went out of business. This allows liquids within, like antifreeze, to leach into the groundwater and the creek. Because of the lack of trash pickup, this problem has been neglect neglected for years. While current reclamation work is technically up to code, it's causing some serious water damage at this very moment. I was confused when this had first been explained to me. I would think that reclamation work would help to eliminate any problems with flooding. This is not the case in Daint. With the reclamation work to remove gob piles, the workers are reusing old mining roads. Along the way, they have installed new drain pipes, which take water from the top of the mountain, along the roads, and onto the community of Daint. This is because the drain pipes do not follow the natural contour of the mountain as they should, allowing water to disperse in any direction, which washes out roads, driveways, and floods the basements of homes. This is not ideal in a practical sense, and certainly not for homes that are over 100 years old. As I mentioned earlier, Lick Creek is a major contributor to the Clinch River, but this may not be the best thing considering that the sewage system in Daint has a past and continues to be a site for sewage waste. Originally, all of the houses had an outhouse toilet, and these toilets would often be near the creek, contaminating the water. This would be especially disturbing when the water levels in the creek would become low due to the mines using the water. However, about 20 years ago, Dean got a new sewer system for most of the houses. Jason Gollett says that this system is not efficient and is seeping into the groundwater and therefore Lake Creek. He, along with others, are advocating for, the, for a new sewer system, as well as for any remaining houses whose sewage is still straight piped into the creek to be taken care of. While there is plenty of work to be done with cleaning up Lick Creek, garbage, and gob piles, there is a severe lack in younger people in the area who are willing to advocate to make changes. The majority of people who inhabit Daint are retired coal miners and their families. The majority of people who inhabit Daint are retired coal miners and their families. These people have survived through a lot and have astounding tenacity. Without similar, gritty, younger people to stand in with the same pride that the elderly have for their community, it will continue to be a struggle for Daint to have cleaner grounds and waterways. Without these desperately needed new community members, there will be no one left to persistently step up to the management in charge of reclamation work and demand for proper, considerate restoration practices. As long as mining companies continue to own the entirety of Dane's land, businesses cannot be created, people will have no place to work and therefore no desire to reside in the area. The coal-based economy in Dane is gone. There's a coal car rusty from disuse on a railroad track, a memory from a distant time. Now, since America relies on oil and natural gas more than coal for its energy needs, it is unlikely that bringing back coal to Dane will be possible. Instead, the community with the help of Curvy is shifting their energies towards ecotourism and historical preservation in the small town. When I first met the community partners, as well as our interviewees, I was impressed by their enthusiasm and love for each other and their community. I had never been to a small town such as Daint before, and I felt welcomed into their close-knit family. On each interview day, I was excited to hear their residents' stories. Preserving the history of the town is important since the majority of the people in Daint are elderly. However, it is also imperative that we encourage individuals to realize there is worth in a small Appalachian town like Daint, 
and urge them to be active in helping revitalize communities such as theirs. I just want to thank the ARC, our community partners and interviewees, and our professors for making this wonderful experience possible. Thank you. <laughs>